Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today. And this story comes from Liverpool. We've had a lot of news to catch up on. We've done some London news, West Midlands news. And this story is an update to a story that we covered last year. Initially, the story was Michael Rainsford was shot dead in his house while he was sat in his kitchen. Someone shot through his window of his house. Twice it has emerged and killed him. The Liverpool Echo have actually followed the court case. Two people, two brothers, are standing trial for his murder. And Michael Rainsford was killed as it's emerged in front of his family. He was shot dead in front of his dad and his brother. And I actually spoke to his brother afterwards after I did the first video on his death. And I said my condolences to his brother and his family at this time. They say in the Liverpool Echo that a much-loved son was shot dead in the kitchen and he admitted to his father that he was chased by machete-wielding thugs months before he was murdered. Michael Rainsford's father, who is also called Michael, said that his son was as white as a ghost when he came home after fleeing two men that was on a motorbike with machetes. The incident took place during a period that the 20-year-old had told his family that he didn't like living in the area. Jurors in the trial for the two brothers that were accused of his murder watched an interview with his dad, who spoke to police in the aftermath of his son's murder in April. He said that his son was a quiet man. He said he became concerned with his son's behaviour when he got involved in low-level cannabis dealing. He said he never saw drugs in the house and his son didn't have much money, but he noticed the smell of Class B drugs on him from time to time. He then told the officers about his efforts to try and help find him a job and everything I spoke about in the video previously when we spoke about Keelan Wilson's story and the, the efforts that his father made to try to do it. And this is what we need to be doing is the relatives of people need to speak out however hard it is because the presumption sometimes is that these kids don't have families. They're in the street doing things that their families could have stopped, but it's not always the case. The jury have heard in the courtroom that this involved two gangs called Lineker Young Guns, and it was feuded with a rival group called Kirkstone Riot Squad. Michael Sr. said that he was vaguely aware of the dispute between the gangs in the South Sefton area of Liverpool, but he did not know who was involved. He said that his son would have been perceived to have had links to a certain gang, but he said that he wasn't involved in the gang directly, and that would have been the Kirkston gang. The machete incident that Michael told his father about, and was described by his brother Josh, and he says that they were standing by shops with their friends in Kirkstone Road North uh, that was near to their family home. They was approached by a motorbike and some people ran to flats and the shops and Michael ran home. His dad later told his son that you need to stop hanging around with the people that you are and you can do this slowly but surely over a period of time. When the police asked his dad if he had stopped being involved in gangs, his dad said that he thought he had and that he'd got a new girlfriend and he was spending more and more time with her and he no longer thought that he was involved. The two brothers stand in trial are Michael Foy and James Foy from Seaforth and both of them deny murder and possession of a firearm and also possession of ammunition without a certificate. James also denies a separate allegation of possession of a prohibited weapon in connection with a shooting in Bootle in 2019. Their mother Joyce Smith and their next door neighbour Andrea Saunderson and their uncle Craig Johnson are all in court as well for perverting the course of justice. So just in this one case, they've dragged their family into it, their mother, and this is very common, it happens all the time. Of course, relatives will look out for their other relatives, but the police do not take that into consideration. In another article that was done more recently about this case, in excerpts that was taken from court, they said that mobile phone analysis determined that the shooting victim was nowhere near the home of the rivals, the Foy brothers. Because allegedly in court they said that they believe Michael Rainsford had smashed the window of the Foy brothers home at some point before he was murdered. But mobile phone analysis now says that that wasn't the case. They say that Michael was struck by two bullets as they were fired through the window from a powerful handgun. The prosecution believed that it was retribution for a home that had had its window smashed that had belonged to the brothers. The jury heard in detailed evidence from John Tarpey, who was a chartered engineer and an expert in mobile phone analysis. 
that when the Foy brothers' home was smashed in Seaforth on April the 7th at 10.20, Mr. Rainsford would have been at Harrington Road in his kitchen. He told the court he believed that he would have been nowhere near the address during the time of the windows being smashed. In relation to the Foy brothers being at Mr. Rainsford's property during the actual murder, they found links that they were nearby during the time of the shootings. And the mobile phone expert supported this as well. And this is just the latest. This is nothing new in Liverpool. It's just not covered as much in mainstream media. In the past 16 days from the beginning of the year through January, seven people have been shot in 16 days. On December the 27th in Bootle, there was a shooting and no one was injured, but three people were arrested on suspicion of money laundering. Two days later, there was a shooting on Harrington Road in Litherland again, which is the same location where Michael Rainsford was killed. Despite the proximity of the attacks, Police say they don't believe they are linked and they are separate street gangs from South Sefton. Several shots are thought to have been fired in the Harrington incident and no one was injured and no damage was discovered at the scene. Police said they, find they found evidence shots had been fired from bullet casings recovered in the area. So this is another example. This is only December. This is a, less than a month ago of a shooting in the same area where he was killed nearly a year ago. A shooting took place also on Dingle Lane and a week later there was a reported shooting in Merseyside to start off 2021. On the 10th of January, police were called to Ashover Avenue in Dovecote after a man was shot in both his legs. And in a statement, police said that they were appealing for witnesses after an Everton shooting, after another man was shot in the legs also. And there's been so many different cases recently and historically. And I've got more stories to come from Liverpool in the next week as well. So don't forget to turn on your bell for notifications and please pay respects to Michael in the comments. I'll be back again very shortly with some more news.